Good afternoon, everybody. How are you doing? I have made a pretty big mistake. But before we get on to that, first, let's address the elephant in the room. Last week, we failed massively at getting both these headlights in. And Joe's back, as he always ends up being. And we're basically going to jack the car up, take this wheel off, and we'll have full access to the inside of the arch to hopefully take the bumper off and do this. Fingers crossed it shouldn't take too long as I've got a bit of experience now. So now that we have the wheel off, it's pretty much the same concept as last week. There is the one bolt just there, and then there's another one just up here somewhere in the arch, just there. And then there is this top one just up here. I don't know if my camera can focus on it. But yeah, if we undo those three, this part of the wheel liner might, well, it will come free. We might need to undo that one there. Uh, there's obviously that one there. We'll basically go and do a few. We'll try to pull this away and see what we can work with. So after removing so, so many bolts, we've now found where that little one is. Obviously, it wouldn't come out last week. It is right up here. I oh, it's difficult to get my camera up there. But um, if I can see it in the editing, I will point out to you guys. But it's right up there behind the arch liner, which explains why I've taken the wheel off. So the next step is we're going to now undo that bolt. And fingers crossed once we undo that, and then we open up the bonnet, and then we undo everything on the inside. We should be able to drop the bumper off just enough where we can then obviously take the lights out and change them over. Fingers crossed. Okay, we've got the light out. Massive, massive thank you to Joe. He got the bolt out that we could not get out. Oh, that's such a relief. That so many hours last week. <laughs> it took like 10 minutes. I mean, you could have just called me. It just took 10 minutes. So this is obviously the lights, as we know. Not much wiring is required for these, but we do need to change all the bulbs over quickly. Don't forget that, so quickly do that. So we've got all the bowls changed over and the light now plugged in. Joe's cracking on with scratch up the caliper down there as we're also gonna paint that one, seeing as the wheel's off, why not? But just gonna check these bulbs, make sure everything's working. It's not for any, obviously, uh, warning lights up on the dash or anything. They're on this side. They're on that side. They're on that side. Maybe I've put the, this cable on the wrong way. As I went to check the headlights to see if any of the halos were working, none of them were. They were all on on the driver's side, but absolutely none on the passenger side. Okay, and okay, it's back in. Now you need to find out if that's working again. Why are none of the halos working? They're all fresh, shouldn't they? Well, the headlights are on, guys, but absolutely none of the halos are working. Um, I can't put a finger on as to why that's happening. Let's just check full beam real quick. Full beam works. Yeah, full beam's on. Cool. But none of the halos are working. No. I'm not entirely sure as to why none of the halos are working, but like I said last week, I am going to do a full video on these where I clean them up, go through and just fix all the issues. I'm not too fussed about the halos not working at the moment because they're not really an integral part of a light. So I'm just going to leave it for now. Obviously, the lights are working fine other than the halos, but definitely in a few weeks time, we'll crack these open and we'll just fix them, clean them and do everything that we need to do. But at least for now, we've got the other headlight changed and it does not look a bit lopsided, if that makes sense. And just like that, we are now on with the headlight. We've now got four eyes for a car now and it looks so, so much better. I'm really, really happy with how this looks now. All we've got to do is just put in the rest of the arch liner and then we're going to paint this caliper up to make it look red, obviously, like the other ones. And just like that, we are now back on with the wheel. Massive thanks to Joe for painting that caliper. It looks absolutely mint. It looks so much better than what we had before, obviously. This is what we've gone from, so it looks 10 times better. Obviously, we need to 
finish off doing that rear one too. But for now, let me just explain to you the big mistake I've made and why I need every single one of yours help. So where to begin? A couple of weeks ago, I picked up a YM Sport rear bumper from one of my subscribers for £50. Now, if you're watching then, you'll remember that I took it down to a body shop to get a quote for it to be resprayed. But let's just say I wasn't expecting it to be as much as they quoted. The amount it would have cost to get this bumper resprayed is ludicrous. I could buy two, maybe three rear bumpers, the M Sport ones, or maybe even a 1M style one for the price that they quoted, which was a whopping £360 just to have it painted. Well, when they told me that, I, I literally couldn't believe it was that much. I would not think it would be that much, especially when you can get an M Sport rear bumper for somewhere between £80 to £150. That has been used in relatively good condition. But 360 I was not going to pay that. So I did, I think, what the most logical thing was to do and go and pick it back up. So now that we've picked up the rear bumper again, we've got three options. And this is where I need your guys' help. So the first option is we go ahead with it. We pay £360 to get this painted to then be the same colour as the rear of my car, which is obviously black. The second option is if one of you have a body shop, which I think is very very unlikely to a small amount of subscribers that i have you guys let me come in and use the body shop teach me a few things we work together to paint this bumper black but the chance of that happening are incredibly incredibly unlikely and finally the last option is we sell it we sell it and we go pick up a black one to fit the back of the car that could be an m sport one or an m1 one uh, m style should i say rear bumper which looks so much nicer than these m sport ones but come at a bit more of a hefty price. Now, I'm not really too sure as to which options go for. I'm leaning more towards option three because option one's just crazy and option two is a real shot in the dark and I don't think that could happen. But let me know your thoughts down in the comments. I'll leave three comments, option one, two or three. If you just leave a like on the one that you think I should go for, whichever one has the most likes, I'll consider that option. But if you want to just leave your own thoughts on it, comment that also down below. But that is the situation for the rear bumper and why I made a pretty big mistake in buying it. So I think we'll just leave that there on a little bit of a bombshell until maybe next week or so. And so I've looked through all the comments, but I've got a little thing on up on the roof of the car now. And that little thing is gonna be a shark fin to replace this horrible, horrible antenna. So here is the antenna that we're gonna put onto the top of the car to hopefully replace this wand that sticks out and looks completely ridiculous in my opinion. Now to unscrew the old antenna is actually really simple. It's just twisted off like that. And in here houses what is literally your radio. But we're gonna replace it with obviously this, but unfortunately it doesn't quite fit. Let me show you. As you can see, the bottom of the shark fin's quite large uh, and covers quite a bit of surface area. And due to what the antenna basically screws into, this is rather large too. It doesn't fit. So we're gonna have to cut some of this off to basically allow it to come down flat. And then that will be covering up what is under here. And it does screw in as well. So we will still get a radio, which we're not really gonna use. So we're gonna have to modify that. I'm gonna get a little pen and a saw out. We're just gonna cut away maybe half of that bit on the bottom and then fingers crossed it goes flat. It is starting to rain, so let's get in the garage and let's get our hands dirty cutting up this shark fin. And just like that, as soon as we get inside, it starts absolutely tipping it down with rain. Thank God we're in here. Fingers crossed it stops raining when I finish with this because I do want to get it on the car and it's only stuck on with like some double-sided sticky tape thing. And now I'm not gonna be able to put it on if it's raining. So hopefully it stops raining. But also whilst we are in here, if you guys would like to see a really pretty interesting garage build or like a, not really a build but kind of like a conversion because right now this is the state of our garage it's a tip it's an absolute tip and i want a bit of workspace where i can do things like this in a garage so if you want to see a video might take like a month long might take a bit more than a month to make but if you want to see like a garage build type thing where we just strip out the garage and we actually make it look half decent Leave it in the comments because I'd really like to hear what you've got to say because I do want to turn this garage into a place where I can work, but it is going to take a while. So leave your opinions down below. Let's get this shark fin done.
And just like that, after a little bit of dremeling, which is something I've never done before, uh, it was good fun actually, we've now got a shark fin that should go over the top of my car. I've had six off the side wall on the inside as well. With a bit of persuasion, this should sit over the top of where the old antenna was, but as it is still absolutely tipping it down outside, you're gonna have to wait till it dries up because this, the, the, like the tape that sits on this is just not gonna stick if it's wet and rainy. So we'll wait for it to dry up and then we'll fit this on the car. Now, despite it absolutely tipping down right now, I am not gonna stop to like, try and get this on. I want to get this on immediately. So I'm gonna try my hardest at, well, fitting this in the rain. We're gonna try and keep everything as dry as possible, but I can't see this going particularly well. That's all right, it's just all part of the fun, right? Once we get a unit one day, we'll be able to do this just fine, but then with a unit, we probably wouldn't be working on one series, a little E87 one series, should I say. Let's get this on. So I've just taken a leather rag basically around the area that the tape's gonna sit and it's drying up nicely despite it raining still. But if I just keep on wiping this, it is drying up really nicely. We're just gonna have to work really fast to try and take this back bit of the tape off and then get it on there and keep everything dry. Well, it's on, but it's not really on. It's got the wrong curvature compared to my car, but that's really annoying. I can't find any that are for my car. So I thought I'd just buy one off the internet and probably have to do exactly what I've done. But oh, it's so frustrating because I can't find one that fits my car and it's, it's not on there properly, but it's on. As you can see, there is a huge gap in this. But the front and the back of it's held on, just the side bits aren't it. Like I said, it's the wrong curvature. I couldn't, I can't find one that's for my car. It looks like it's gonna pop back off. I might have to scrap this. That is so, that honestly, that looks horrendous. I hate it. I, I'm getting rid of it, I'm getting rid of it. If you guys know any like shark fins that are for this car, please leave them down below because that is absolutely awful and I I don't like that at all. I can't find any for my car, so if you can, please leave it in the comments below. I really could do with just a hand with that. But despite it raining, it's literally just popped back off. That's really funny as we're talking. It's just popped off. It's going, it is going. But the last thing that I think we're gonna to do today is fix this oil leak that we've been getting from obviously the rocker cover. You know the gasket I bought a few weeks ago? It's time to get it in the car. So then, Joe is back. It's time to start working on this gasket. But first, I think what we're gonna do is disconnect batteries. We've got to be working with some of the electrics up front. I don't want to electrocute myself. Now with the battery disconnected, it's time to start removing these top trims up here so we can get full access to the back of the engine. I believe it's if we take these two covers off, there's a few bolts that hold this big piece on and then there's a few clips. There's an electrical connector there. There should be one, or maybe not over here, but if we just remove all of that, we get a bit more access to the back of the engine. That is all of the trims now taken off the top of the engine. It's time to take the engine cover off, which is that bolt there, that bolt there, and then there's one just tucked somewhere down behind there. And then that cover will come off. Make sure to take off the oil cap as well, or otherwise it's not going anywhere. Now with the engine cover removed, it's time to remove the coil packs, uh, which I'll show, well, which Joe will show you. So you basically just lift up the top bit and then the back of it comes out and you unplug it. And that is literally how you remove one of the ignition coils. Do that to all four and then I think remove spark plugs. So with all the coil packs disconnected, you'll pull out these four next, which I think they are, well, obviously the spark plug sits in the end. They're meant to be clean, but as you can see, they are covered in oil, which 
clearly indicates a rocker cover fail. Okay, so now with what I believe they're like coils or like coil injectors that go down obviously into where the spark plugs are removed. Next thing is to remove this positive cable here so we can just remove these positive, well, so we can move these positive cables out of the way, giving us more access to this fuel rail, which is next to come out. So we've just moved the nut that should allow us to move this out of the way now, like that got a bit more access to the engine. The next bit is to remove this fuel line. This is, I'm absolutely terrified for this. The whole time I've been absolutely terrified, but mainly for this bit here. And it's gonna be a 14 mil spanner on that one just there and that one down there, right there, all the way along the engine, remove all of these fuel lines. And I think the fuel pump might have to come off as well. <sighs> this is what I'm really nervous about because I, I don't know, I've never done this before, okay? You just gotta allow it. I'm nervous, but we're giving it a go. I wanna, I wanna say for science, but we're doing, this for, we're doing this for a healthy engine and for you guys. So let's get this done. Come on, wish me luck. We're gonna die. Let's get that fuel rail off. We're gonna need some spanners, which somehow me and my dad have absolutely none of. So problems are whole foods, gonna pick up a set and then finish off taking this fuel rail off. But we're, we're running low on time. We gotta be fast. Okay, we're here literally to get them spanners like we were saying. We've got a guy down here who is gonna open the cabinet for us. Oh, this is a nightmare. That is the spanner set we're looking for, the eight to 24 mil one. The set, please, mate. Yeah, so I've got ratchet spanners there. Yeah, can I have the 16 piece one? Yeah, we've got the flex head neck or the non flex head neck. Ooh, can I have the. Oh, one, please. Yes, yeah. I know. The best way to like spanners is. Sooner or later, you're going to need all sizes, aren't you? Yeah, exactly. Like, we're very expensive find the one inside. I do YouTube and work on my car right yeah. now. We changed the rocket cover gasket on my engine. Need some spanners to take the fuel rail off. <laughs> We've got none, yeah. so. There you go. Brilliant. Thank, Thank you ever so much. Okay, we've got the spanners. Let's go pay. <laughs> Thank God for that. I make just that one, please. Bloody. $69.99. Got a trade card as well. It's really fine. That takes you down to, let's see what the damage is, $48.99. That's not a bad thing. That's really good. Well, good luck for it, my man. Hopefully it goes well for you. No, it's not too bad to be fair. I've been doing it for, I've been doing it half a year and I'm already up to 600 subs. So. Uh, it's Sam Bryan. Oh, that's just what it is, it? Yeah, literally just Sam Bryan. Awesome. What a guy. The guy that we literally just bought these spanners off at a desk in Holford's. He just subscribed to me on YouTube. Absolute legend if you're watching this. This is the wrong side. I'm, I'm in your car. <laughs> so now we're back from Holford's. We need a 14 mil spanner to take, obviously, all of these parts of this fuel rail off, which Joe is kindly going to give to me right now. Now we've just removed all of the like little electrical connectors that are on all of the injectors. We need to pull off this clip here on the, I think what's the injector line I'm guessing, and pull the hose back. That's the next job. Okay, quick update. We've taken the fuel pump out and the fuel rail's disconnected. I think next we've got to remove all of these um, like wires and then we should be able to take the rocker cover off, finally. So that's all the wires and everything disconnected now. It's time to take off every single bolt that holds on the rocker cover and then it will be off and we can change the gasket. This is, what, two hours at this so far. It's going to be dark in about two hours, so we're doing good for time. Well, I have made a second big mistake and this time it genuinely is a really big mistake so we got to here on removing the rocker cover all the bolts and everything are done except except i snapped i think it's a pcv valve or the pipe trying to pull it off and it just snapped in half and yeah i i don't, don't know what i'm gonna do about that but I'm gonna change the gas on this rocker cover. I feel absolutely deflated. I Right now, I genuinely wanna give up, but I've gotta get this gasket changed. So we're just gonna crack on with that. I, yeah. Well, we're gonna have to leave it there. Let me explain why. So obviously that hose back there is broke. Not only that, we've dropped the spanner through onto the under tray and we've managed to round off this bolt right here. I don't think it's the bolt we've rounded off. I, well, I'm hoping it's the bolt. 
but I'm almost certain that we rounded off the block of the engine, which, oh, honestly, I'm, I'm tired. It's pitch black out here now. It's gone 9 p.m. I, I give up for today. I give up this week. We're going to have to come back and sort this out another time. But, yeah, I, I've got no car now for a while, so that's a bit of a bummer. Uh, luckily, I've still got the course where I can ensure that and drive that around. But for now, this is stuck as it is right here. Thank you guys for watching. I really, really appreciate it. If you go around there, like and subscribe. I, I really could do if you guys help right now. I'll see you next week on Sunday if there is even anything I can record for next week on Sunday now. See you then. And I'll, yeah, peace out.